Okay, so just the other day I uploaded Dragon OS Focal R12. Uh, took a lot of time to get a bunch of new tools in there. And of those tools, um, well, at least for this video, I just want to take a look at a couple, which is the Blade RF Wi Fi. I, I touched on that before and used the Blade RF XA9 to set it up as an access point. Uh, but this time we're going to use it along with uh, several or a few other SDRs uh, with Kismet. And Kismet has been updated in Dragon OS Focal uh, to allow the use of the Blade RF XA9 to act as a monitor mode interface for wireless. So you can read about Blade RF Wi Fi here on this page. You can check out uh, Kismet at kismetwireless.net and see what that is, the wireless network and device detector sniffer. All right, so you can check out what uh, Kismet here uh, is at, here at uh, kismetwireless.net. You can see it's a wireless network and device detector sniffer so on and so forth. Uh, we're going to use uh, the Blade RF XA9 with this. We're going to use a Ubertooth. And because I'm not using the Kerberos SDR for direction finding right now, we will use the Kerberos SDR, which um, basically will act as a uh, like an RTL SDR-like dongle. There's four radios in there. We'll use three out of the four for several other features of Kismet. So that'll be like five SDRs at once. And before we do that, we will, just to be on the safe side here, I'm going to increase the USB FS uh, size in um, Dragon OS here, just so that I know all the radios will load. I think a, th a thousand should be fine. I'm just using this page here to remind me how to do it. So if I pull up a terminal, copy and paste this in here, this should only be temporary. Okay. And let's see, so the first time you run Kismet, you'll just pull up a terminal and make sure you know where you are at. I'm just in my home directory here because that's where your log files are going to be saved and that's where your configuration is going to be saved. So the first time we start Kismet, just type Kismet. We're going to open up this link here, localhost 2501. And I'm going to minimize this uh, terminal. Don't close it, just let it run in the background. Now, if it was the first time, and I should show that, so let's 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 check this out again here, just to show what I'm I'm talking about here. So if I if I remove char kismet, and uh, we start this again, we should find that we are going to be prompted to create a username and password. So we'll create that, and then I'm going to use another page here uh, that I've saved. Uh, it has a different um, ending on it. This way the MAC addresses are going to be censored for this demo, and I will pull this down to kind of blank out the SSID names. I'll also minimize this terminal because uh, you'll find if you leave that up, you'll see the MAC addresses and stuff in the terminal. And you want to check that too if you run into any issues uh, along the way. But we're going to go to data sources and now we're going to see all the different uh, devices we're going to be able to select from here. So for example, uh, the RTL SDR, if we start there, there's four radios in it. It starts at zero and goes to three, zero, one, two, three. So I'll pick the zero radio and that'll serve as our RTL 433 interface and if you look up uh, RTL 433 on Google you'll see there's a quite a big list of devices that have been identified and so there's really nothing around here that I can show right now uh, whether it be uh, doorbells, alarm systems, weather sensors um, depending on your antenna and what's around you should be able to pick those up. Uh, I'll come to the interface number one which is actually the second radio and sometimes you might have to close the data sources out. All right, we'll come back here. We'll pick the RTL AMR interface. And then we will use the next interface for ADSB. All right, so, so far I've got three interfaces going. We've got some packets on ADSB. Now, if
if we wanted to use the Blade RF XA9, we need to do one additional thing. We'll go into our user source Wi-Fi build. This is where all the files are for creating the access point, like I've shown in previous videos. All we want to do is load the um, special FPGA. Once that's loaded, then we should be able to come in here, pick that interface, which will capture the wireless devices, Wi-Fi. And then last but not least, we'll use the Ubertooth uh, for the Bluetooth devices. So now we've got uh, all radios going here. You can see at the top the RTL-433. we got AMR, ADSB, Wi-Fi, and Ubertooth all with software-defined radios. You can see all the devices that are being seen here. They're all be saved. You can sort by devices as well as the data sources. So unfortunately, where I've kind of got things set up, um, I'm probably not going to be able to see uh, really any of the AMR or the 433 devices. Um, probably will see aircraft uh, listed here if I let it run long enough. And then, of course, you can tie um, GPS into this as well, which you would get up here if you were in an area that had GPS and you had GPSD. Uh, setup, which I also cover in previous videos, that would be um, requiring you to, uh, let's see, to edit the Etsy default GPSD file. You would go in here and you would list the device here. It's typically something like dev and you would find it in your um, folder under dev and you would see what the device is there. I think it's TTY USB 0. If you have one device plugged in, that's typically what it is. You'd configure that there. And then you would issue a start of the GPSD service. Uh, you might have to restart it and then you would eventually get GPS and Kismet. All right, so you can uh, click on devices to get more uh, detailed information about it. Uh, if you click the ADS-B live map I've shown in previous videos and you have internet, you'll see a map of where the aircraft are at, SSIDs, of course, self-explanatory. Uh, other than that, um, there's a lot of uh, packet rates, channel coverage. You can t alter what channels you want uh, looked at. Like if we take a look under the Blader F, you can see the different channels it's going to look at. You can lock, you can hop, so on and so forth. Um, so really this was just more about showing you how to use all the SDRs together in Kismet, especially that new feature of the Blader F XA9 with the Wi-Fi firmware on it running in Kismet. So, all right, um, future videos, I'll touch on some of the additional tools that are in R12 and some of the things that I've fixed. So, all right, thank you.